Shalom virtual family. Today we are going to talk about water. Well, in my case, the lack thereof. So as you know, I live in Africa and from time to time, the water goes out. So there is currently no water in the area that I live in and it's been like that for about seven days now. Um, this lady, you, as you can see, she's walking with jugs and this is pretty much what everyone is doing everywhere here because we are all trying to fill up our water tank so that we can bathe in buckets, flush the toilet with bucket and wash our dishes with bucket water. So this is why, this is why it's important to get my borehole drilled for times like this. So this person has a borehole. These are all the jugs. They have and put a lock on it so no one can take water except for those that they approve. Um, so we just going around from borehole to borehole seeing who has water so I can fill my jugs um, until the tap come back. But on my land, I'm getting a borehole drug, dug so that I don't have this issue in the future. So, welcome to Ghana, Aquaba. So, I got back home and I'm really excited because we have our individual um, pipes here. And the water is coming. Oh, we're so, we're going to fill up three buckets um, for my kitchen and my bathroom. I mean, for my kitchen and my toilet. I already got um, water for me to bathe with. So these are the containers that are in my bathroom. So this person is filling up. So yay, we have water. Small, small, a little bit. So let's get in there slowly. But I'm just happy to have water from our pipe so I can stop running around town. I'll wait, girl. We got action. <laughs> I already filled up one bucket, so one more. Okay, so I filled up um, a bucket to um, use for my dishwasher. So basically, I keep two buckets of water here so that when the water goes out, I can still flush the toilet. And then this is two water cans that... I use when the water ran out so I could take a bucket bath. And then here's some of my homemade soap. Ow, bam. Shalom, guys. Good morning. Um, I'm getting ready to wash dishes. I got water. We ran out of water, as I was telling you guys in the prior videos, um, here in Cape Coast. So I got a bucket of water, and I want to show you guys how I'm going to clean my kitchen from this bucket of water considering this is not how we do things in America. I'm also making me some like hash browns um, or whatever. So I have to wash these three pots. Um, I have some stuff over here. I prep my meal, so I cleaned out the refrigerator. I got some things I need to clean out there. And then I have some dishes here. So I'm just about to take you through the journey of washing dishes from a um, bucket. Okay, so the first thing I do is just get a clean, extra little pot of water for the rinsing of the sponge. Then I have my sponge here, so I'm going to rinse it off. And then I'm going to make this sponge extremely soapy. So I want it really soapy because I'm really just going to wash every piece of dish with it. So make it really soapy and then you just start washing. As I wash, I'm just gonna sit it to the side. So in this process, you normally just wash everything first and then you'll go back through, through and rinse everything.
It's very simple. It's not a lot of, it's not um, complicated at all. It can be frustrating when you first start, but that's only because we are spoiled and used to a certain way of doing things. things in a container uh, like pasta or something like that has a strong smell and when I wash it if I smell it while I'm washing it what I'll do is go ahead and rinse it and then I'll wash it again with a little drop of bleach so that I'm not eating eggs and tasting potatoes or something. Like you just wanna make sure there's not a scent. And some sense of food is stronger than others. So it just depends on what I had in this bowl. I will wash it a couple times, uh, the second time being with a little bit of bleach. So my um, clean area is starting to um, is starting to get too full. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and rinse these and put them away, and then. So you can see all the clean dishes there. And so I'm gonna just rinse them. So this is my clean water over here. And I'm just gonna slowly rinse. When you run out of water, and when you don't have water and um, accessible amounts like in America, um, you just learn to really appreciate water. And so I'm gonna take my time to make sure I don't lose too much water. One of the good things is to rinse your hands so you're not re-putting soap on the dish. And then I just put it away and we're gonna just keep going that way. use for simple things like brushing our teeth you wouldn't under you really really wouldn't understand how much water you use to do that or how much water goes into washing dishes especially in a sink like mine i just got a one sink i've always liked a two sink countertop i'm trying to hurry up i have a vision board party today with three of my closest girlfriends here in ghana and um, I need to make some black eyed peas. Everyone is bringing a dish and a drink. So I'm making black eyed peas and I'm gonna open a bottle of champagne that was given to me on my birthday. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to hurry up because I'm also, I also need to cut up some fruit 
because I am going to make myself a pineapple smoothie and ginger and uh, what else I got over there? I don't know, whatever fruits I got, I'm going to make me a smoothie to go with my breakfast this morning. It's going to run away. It's actually um, quite um, um, therapeutic because if I wasn't recording, I would just be in here singing and dancing, and, you know, not even realizing um, what you guys would call my inconvenience. squeeze this out and just kind of, you know, get a fresh sponge. Everything is crazy from the get-go, either one of us knew why. can hear the music or if y'all can hear me singing but I apologize this is how I get through my mornings so this it's a lot of food in here that I don't want on my sponge I'm gonna rinse it first you're gonna get food on the sponge but they don't need to be if you just want me without you, baby. Yeah. Okay. You already know you This has some food that has been sitting for a minute, so I'm going to put a couple drops of bleach. <laughs> to heat up my food. I don't even own a microwave. I use a, um, I use a, the steam. So I, it's a double boiler. So I put a little bit of water in this size pot. And then I take the strainer, which is pretty big. And then I put my food in the strainer. I'm not doing double work. So yeah, I know it seems like a lot, but like I said, you just learn to appreciate the small things, the things we take for granted in America. You just kind of learn to appreciate it here. So this is like my morning routine that has become a therapeutic I'm trying to hurry up, y'all. I got so much to do today. But I think it's important for you all to see what you are taking advantage of in America. Tray of food. I put my food in one of those black trays I washed earlier. 
and I just set it in here and then this goes into the pot for steaming my food, like heating it up. So that's why this is so brown, because it's always in the water. It's always getting boiled. this little food collector inside of my sink. I'm not sure if you can see it, but just make sure I finish it up. So that's good. And then I'll just take this and pour it out. Now I'll clean this out. Pretty much done with the kitchen all the dishes are off the stove countertops are clean the dishes are drying i'm gonna go and refill this bucket just so it's ready for the next time i need to wash dishes if the water start back running well i will take that bucket and sit it over there and it's kind of be in reserve until you know i need it again so So the last thing I want to say or make sure to make mention of before I let you go is um, for one thing to drill your own borehole costs about 2000 US dollars and you will never have another water bill in your life. But at this time for myself in particular, I'm not able to actually invest in my borehole just yet. Like I'm hoping to get it within the next six or seven months. So if you're like me and you can't put $2,000 into that particular project, you can get something called a poly tank, which is what you're looking at now. This is 2,500 milliliters worth of water. And basically someone comes out and fill this up for you and it takes a very long time to run out of this water and this is another way where you won't be paying a water bill so the black thing that you see is called a poly tank and the part that is holding it high um, which you need elevation to get the proper flow that's the reason why poly tanks sit that high anyways the part that it is sitting on top of is called the poly tank structure now the poly tank costs about 1500 cds and the poly structure um, together with the labor and materials cost about 1800 cds so you're looking at about 3200 cds which is about 520 american dollars um so yes i just want to show you the um, alternative for being off the grid as far as having a water bill is to get you a poly tank and poly tank structure until you can get your borehole and that'll actually save you about fifteen hundred dollars which which can go a very long way here in ghana so this is uh you know type of project you want to take your time on but anyways guys i hope you enjoyed the video if you liked it please press the like button if you didn't like it please press the unlike button <laughs> um subscribe cut your post notifications on and tell a friend to tell a friend thank you guys for tuning in until next time it's your girl alita yasharela